What's your name? Kat Kitson. <coughs> Will you give yourself to this program? Yes, sir. All right, The Born Legacy. This might be the fourth film in the franchise, but it's the first in a lot of other ways. For one thing, it's my first review. But also, it's the first one to be directed by Tony Gilroy. He's one of the co-writers for all the previous films of the franchise. It's also the first one that not really have anything to do with Jason Bourne at all. Taking over the helm as protagonist and antagonist are Hawkeye and Bruce Banner respectively. Jeremy Renner plays Aaron Cross slash Kenneth Gibson, a genetically engineered secret agent and product from Operation Outcome. After the actions of Jason Bourne in the previous films, the government decided to basically rid itself of all its Black Ops programs. This includes eliminating any subsequent field agents. Enter Eric Beyer, played by Ed Norton. He's the man behind all the Operation Outcome and a lot of his other, and a lot of his other projects. In Tying of Loose Ends, they discovered that at least one of their highly trained super soldiers is extremely hard to kill. At least, that's what the movie will have you believe. In reality, the movie's about Cross fiending for the drugs that made him who he is. Remember that whole altered chromosomes thing in those trailers you saw a million times over the summer? Pharmaceuticals. Jason Bourne may have been out to expose his superiors in the last films, but this guy is most certainly not. If anything, it feels like the government is chasing him and he's running away. So it makes me wonder, why do they even bother to go after this guy? I mean, if anything, it feels like this guy just wants to be left alone. Granted, he is living out in the middle of the woods in a log cabin like a Unabomber. Anyway, his taste for this Breaking Bad grade crystal meth leads him to Dr. Marta Shearing, played by Rachel Weisz. She's one of the scientists behind the product that Cross is after. And subsequently, as a part of Operation Alchem, she's got to be rubbed out herself. But if they're running, it's the real start of the movie. Unfortunately, this is about an hour into the film. D don't get me wrong, it's not as though there's nothing happening in that first act and a half. It's just that you just, it's a lot of drama you just kind of get dropped into. A lot of talk, a lot of rushing, a lot of security clearance and stuff like that, but it just feels like nothing. The lack of action here makes the Born Legacy feel less like a Born Identity movie, more like Tron Legacy to me. Early scenes with Ed Norton and the other agents, they're, they're mostly shots of people at computers, answering phones, it, it, it looks like the background in an episode of the, of the newsroom. Now there is a lot of frantic tension, but you might have a little trouble figuring out what exactly is going on, at least for the first half hour or so. Jeremy Renner and Rachel Wise, they do have good chemistry. Whenever they were on screen together, it did hold my attention. If anything, that kept me invested enough. But you just can't ignore the elephant in the room when a franchise gets taken over by somebody. Renner does do a good job, but I just don't feel that strongly about the Aaron Cross character itself. He's just no Jason Bourne. I can't totally compare this movie to the last one. It's a new, it's a new character, though why would you call it the Bourne legacy if that was the case? Over the course of the first three films, we get a feel for who Jason Bourne is, his actions, why he does them, and there's actually a grit to it. Everything we learn about the Aaron Cross character is eventually thrust upon us. We get everything from flashbacks, and there are several these sequences throughout the course of the movie. And they range from so-so to, pr to pretty good. None of them are outright bad, but it just kind of feels like everything that we feel for the characters is just manufactured. Honestly, I was just hoping to get a feel for who any of these characters are. Cross, Shearing, Fire, but ultimately it just doesn't end up bearing weight. You want the mystery of why Cross became the super soldier that he is. Or, for that matter, why any of the other eight or nine agents did as well. Oh, earlier I said that Jason Bourne has nothing to do with this movie. That's not entirely true. His mugshot shows up every few minutes in this thing. Matt Damon might be collecting a check on this thing on the virtue of his driver's license ID alone. If you took a shot, every time Matt Damon's face showed up on screen, it would outnumber the body count after the first hour of the movie. The movie feels uneven. As much as I've cracked about the long span of drama and talking, I will say that they do make the action sequences that much stronger. There just aren't enough of them. Of the four or five action sequences in the movie, maybe the first three are like five minutes each. But those action sequences also add to the unevenness of the film. What most people liked about the Bourne movies was that they took the spy genre and made them grittier and more realistic. They even made James Bond take notice. Here, Jeremy Renner has more powers than he did in Avengers. You literally see him jumping across mountains, fighting the dire wolves from Westeros, and he, there's a point in which he's just evading Starscream. Can I just say, I don't know what challenge my suspension of disbelief more. The government spending hundreds of millions of dollars in taxpayer money to get one guy or the use of unmanned drones to get a white guy. Despite all my gripes, I will say that it got the feel of a Jason Bourne movie right. The casting, the sense of tension, even the close-up action sequences where you don't really see anything. And like the other films, there's a ludicrous car chase scene. The ending does not resolve much though. It, it always suits to serve the purpose of making another movie later on. But the action performances were enough to hold my attention. Overall, I can't say that I hated the movie. I just can't say it was worth the full price of a ticket, that's all. Of the four movies, this one comes up short of winning the bronze. See it at home when you have a chance, 
maybe check it out at a matinee, but really, this is one you could probably skip on.